All right, ladies and gentlemen, to all the viewers, welcome to another installment of The Calling with myself, Neo, on your media. All right, if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of these shows that are very, very important, could possibly help you unravel a lot of issues in terms of what you're going through in your life. All right, and The Calling is a show for the spiritually and culturally curious. And through the show, I hope to help you navigate some of life's difficulties, um, be it spiritually or culturally, and uh, try to be as diverse as possible by, um, you know, delving into different ideologies around spirituality. So today's show is uh, largely inspired by a post that I saw on Facebook not too long ago, right? Um, in recent uh, years, if, if not months, we've seen um, a shop spike or a rise in the number of people that we see responding to some kind of a calling and in the process going away to a place a yoktwasa or initiation or a petrini right and uh with their intentions or you know outcomes there of being that once they've graduated, they either become a shaman, a sangoma, or inyanga, for that matter. So now, the one thing that I'd like to focus on today is really this particular post that I came across, all right? And I came across this post on Facebook, all right? So I'm just going to quickly go to Facebook um, real quick, luckily I did save this post, all right? And um, we are living in an age, especially in South Africa, amongst a lot of black South Africans. We are seeing um, people um, responding to this thing um, in the name of I have a calling, you know? And um, there's a lot of information around that in terms of, all right, fine. Um, they say, if you see this, then you have a calling. It means that Meliotwasa and so forth and so on, right? And today's show is particularly dedicated to you that suspects that you have a calling and what the way forward should be from that point on. And uh, the signs that are normally associated with a calling, because there's also misinformation or incomplete information around that. Okay. Um, like I said, this is not specifically only for those people, but if you are curious about spirituality, and in this particular instance, um, African spirituality, South African, more in particular, Ubungoma and so forth. Today we are focusing on that, but my special focus um, out of the entire thing, because it is such a complex subject, um, is rather on, um, you know, how do you really know that you have a calling? Number one, number two is the usual signs that you have a calling, all right? And I, and, and, you know, like I said, this was inspired from a Facebook post by a young lady or by a lady, and uh, basically what she was saying is um, signs that you have a calling, all right? Um, and I went on then to sit and reflect about this. And, um, you know, yes, I do believe that each and every single person in this lifetime, on this earth, we are here because of a particular reason or a particular purpose. All right. So be, be it be that as it may, whether you call it a calling or you call it a purpose. All right. But now if you take it in the context of a calling, the general assumption is that if you have a calling, maybe you're twice, or maybe you're pessoin, or you got to go through some kind of an initiation school in order for you to become a shaman or to become a, a traditional healer or to become inyanga, as they put it. All right. Now I'm of a very, very, you know, I'm, I'm here to throw a spinner into the works and give you a, a, another perspective. It does not mean this one is wrong, but I'm just here to give you another perspective that is worth considering. 
All right. Now, first, let me go through this post. So what this young lady posted is signs that you have a calling, right? So number one, right at the top of a list, she's listed 24 items, right? And I'm going to go through all 24 of them, um, these signs that you have a calling. Now, my biggest intention today and what I hope to drive home to you is that do understand that even though you exhibit these signs, it's not always that you have a calling that requires you to go epiphany or to go to an initiation school for that matter, or even to become a Sangoma, is a Sholabantu um, that will uh, heal people um, in the context that we are normally used to shamans normally doing it in South Africa for that matter. All right. So um, according to this young lady, signs that you have a calling. Number one, sudden mood swings. All right. That's that's one. And I think, you know, generally all of us uh, from time to time because of situations, um, we can find ourselves, you know, um, experiencing different types of feelings that lead to emotions, emotions that lead to um, certain moods or different types of moods, um, you know. So, yes, something to look into. But for me, the idea of mood swings is not enough for me to, like, be convinced that, Okay, I've got a calling, so I must go a petrini or I must attend to this calling. No, not necessarily. Um, today's world has a lot of challenges. Um, social media is also posing a lot of things um, in people's faces on a daily basis, making a lot of people anxious, making a lot of people depressed, and making a lot of people experience or feel different types of moods. Or emotions for that matter, all right? That, that lead then to an exhibition of various types of moods, all right? So, um, you know, in addition to that, so she she points out mood swings, all right? And I'm like, okay, yeah, something to look at. Um, I've even come across of people who have said, you know, um, I was diagnosed with bipolar and um, I've lived with bipolar and I'm at a point where, only when I recognized that, no, this is not actually bipolar, but this was another sign that um, I have a calling. So I attended to my calling, and ever since I underwent that, I don't experience these mood swings like I used to. I don't experience this anxiety or this flood of emotions like I used to. All right. Those are other people's experiences, but it's not cut and dry. It's not always cast in stone that um, if you are experiencing mood swings, that you necessarily um, have to go with your twasa. And and I always advise that, um, you know, get a medical uh, opinion, go see a doctor, go, go see somebody and so forth. You know, um, if that's not working, then, you know, um, also explore alternatives, right? So most people who will talk about mood swings or who will experience mood swings are generally people that, you know, have have, have been diagnosed with um, bipolar as, as, as we've seen, right? Um, sudden mood swings. So that's number one that she refers to, um, a sign that you have a calling. And for me personally, um, I will break it down even further. All right, so the trick or oh, what you've got to do is you've got to stick this podcast through and, you know, see all of it as I unpack everything else because eventually this list is going to lead us to something far more important that a lot of people um, miss or a lot of times is misdiagnosed as somebody having a calling that requires them, Oguti, they must go to initiation school, they must go Ogutwasa, and they must go Epiphany to become a traditional healer or a Sangoma or a shaman. All right. And then here's point number two um, you always want to be alone. Um, you know, 
I've experienced um, these 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 feelings of just wanting your own space and just wanting to be by yourself. But I mean, in this day and age, we can imagine that, you know, so much is happening. And just saying that, oh yeah, you have a calling because you have an, a need to want to be alone. This world gets so crazy that sometimes you just need some time out. So do not confuse um, being tired and just wanting a break, you know, and feeling like being by yourself. Do not confuse that with, you know, supposedly you having your calling and having to go epiphany. It's not always the case. But, um, you know, this is one of the factors or one of the points that this young lady has, has, has pointed out, right? Um, so, you know, don't be too quick to jump into anything, right? Um, explore being by yourself, you know, without concluding that it means that I must go a pechrini. Sometimes you just need to quieten the space that you are in so that maybe your mind can quieten down. Maybe you are always in this rat race and always surrounded by people and always on your own or social media and so forth that you, you, you hardly get a chance to just be in silence with yourself. You know, I normally say that silence is a superpower you know, and the ability to, to be by yourself and uh, not be bored, but to just really just be silent and be still, you know, um, out in nature is, 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 is some kind of a, a superpower that allows us to rejuvenate and to clear out our minds or clear up our minds, all right? So don't always conclude that, oh yeah, Melanie Petrin, no. Um, and then... Point number three, feeling as if you are followed by someone, but yet you're by yourself. Most people would call it paranoia, <laughs> you know, um, where you, you know, let's say you've gone through a traumatic experience in recent times and um, somebody crept up on you and mugged you or, you know, threatened your life in some way or another. I mean, generally, after a traumatic experience like that, you're most likely going to always be anxious that somebody is following you and they just might jump from behind you or on the side without you noticing, right? So before you even conclude and say, um, oh yeah, uh, no, it feels like uh, I'm being followed and uh, I'm by myself. Okay, yeah, no, I've got a calling consider the alternative that what have you recently gone through that could have caused you to be anxious about somebody jumping out from behind and attacking you or startling you in an uncomfortable manner, all right? So, you know, I am advocating for us to still be rational with these signs that we are coming across, all right? And remember, I'm not necessarily saying that you don't have a calling, but I'm just saying that you need hard evidence, all right? And then um, sign number four that this young lady has um, alluded to is sensing shadows every time you pray. You know, prayer is a very powerful, powerful um, thing, all right? Or oh, it's, a, it's a powerful practice. So, you know, depending how, how, how well you can connect in your prayer, you know, and um, what kind of a divine connection you can establish. I've personally went through moments where it felt like I was not alone in the room, you know, and I believe that this is something that can be achieved by anybody that consistently meditates and consistently is looking to establish a deeper connection with their God, all right? Because prayer is supposed to be something this powerful, all right? And it can happen 
that it gets to a point where you establish such an incredible divine channel that allows you to start sensing things beyond the eye, beyond your normal senses, you know, things within the metaphysical, all right? So um, are you connecting metaphysically through prayer? Are you sensing things through prayer? When you pray, do things happen? Do you get visions? That's a good thing. That is a cool thing, all right? As long as it doesn't harm you, all right, and it actually takes you to a better place or um, it, it helps you in some way or another, it's cool. I encourage it, all right? Um, does it mean, Guti, you have to go epiphany? Not necessarily. Maybe it's just that divine connection that you've managed to establish and um, let that guide you in terms of how you go further or what then on needs to follow what you're experiencing, all right? So prayer is a very powerful form. Um, I think in almost every religion, every religion includes some kind of a prayer uh, or the practice of praying. Um, so praying for me is like one of those divine communication processes, all right? And then um, another point this young lady points out is, um, being short-tempered and stubborn or impatient. I think maybe that can also go with uh, sudden mood swings and so forth. So, I mean, if all of a sudden you find yourself short-tempered, um, you know, uh, stubborn and so forth, um, yeah, maybe it's something to look into, you know, um, whereas maybe you've had a recent event that has really disturbed your comfort zone and maybe you're not as in a comfortable position as you used to be so you find with you everything just like makes you lose it um if if you know if you've recently gone through a breakup right and you're not handling that very well you know one of those symptoms that you could experience is being short tempered being impatient you know, um, so open up your mind. Do not be narrow-minded. Consider all possibilities, all right? Um, and then, oh, yeah, here's one. Um, this one is fairly new to me, um, and uh, I've never really had anybody um, associate this with um you know, somebody that has a calling and they need to 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 go and Utwasa. But one of the points she lists or items she lists is that uh, being extremely lazy, you know, <laughs> generally you become lazy when you don't, you know, when you, when you are lacking discipline to do things, right? Um, so for me, this is like, ah, oh, too broad, like I'm extremely lazy, so therefore I have a calling, um, I need to go to us. No, um, for me, it's like, uh, I, I don't think so. Um, people get extremely lazy when they don't have anything they're passionate about that they'd rather be doing. Um, I know people get really lazy of a lot of various factors. It could just be a habit that you got into and you didn't see yourself get into it, where you allowed yourself to be comfortable and to be okay with doing absolutely fuck all or nothing for the whole day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, um, because you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Now, instead of taking responsibility for not getting things done, now you start throwing things like, no, I've got a calling. So I'm, I'm you know, one of the symptoms is that I'm very lazy. And um, as a result, I can't get things done. No. You know, so be careful, you know, because just now you start using these things as justifications for not getting things done. Meanwhile, maybe you're just lacking discipline. You're just lacking commitment. Maybe you're no longer passionate about that job that you are in. You know, it can happen. Maybe you are in the wrong space that doesn't inspire action out of you, right? But so something to consider, right? Um, and then there's a, 
Oh yeah, um, like touching alone. Um, personally, I I've always liked talking to myself. You know, the fact that I'm in here in studio, right, and nobody's interacting with me, but I'm actually talking, right, to a, to a certain extent, it's like I am talking to myself, but I know that you are listening and you are paying attention. But I mean, outside of the studio, this is something I'll do very often, especially when I'm, you know, unraveling um, some some confusing moments in my life or some, you know, I'm faced with a challenge or I need to come up with a solution then what I'll do is I'll have a full-on conversation, literally, with, with myself, but almost like in the third person where, you know, I'll just consider something and I'll hear this conversation going on in my head, but I am of the opinion or of the idea that it, this is all me. I'm just taking different positions in all of me, if, if that makes any kind of sense to you, all right? So talking to yourself could be, and it, 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 it could be, um, you know, a, a, a factor with noting, right? However, it's not always the case. Um, I go through my problem-solving process by having full-on conversation with, like, multiple um, characters of myself. So one character will take a position where they are for that decision or that action. And then another character within myself will take a position where they are speaking against that decision. And then a third character within myself will be that one that is like a mediator and is reminding, you know, um, these two characters within myself to say, listen, these are the principles, these are the values, um, you know, which side is leaning more towards the values and the principles that we've decided for ourselves and which side is not. So, you know, it's not that deep, but hey, I wouldn't dismiss it, right? I really wouldn't dismiss it. Um, part of what happens with me is that um, some clients will come to me for a consultation, um, you know, and they've got some challenges spiritually or some problems in their lives. And I'm not one of those that, um, you know, I, 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 I don't perform the same way as most shamans do, right? I have a very different way in which this takes place. And for me, it would be like there's multiple um, thoughts that come through my mind through these separate or through these entities, which I identify as myself. All right. So I hope that is not too confusing for you, even for myself. Right. But um, yeah, um, I, I, I will get thoughts that I normally wouldn't have that are so out of character. So I know it's all right, fine. Right now, I'm, I'm in that particular realm where, um, you know, I'm getting answers regarding whoever has come to me for consultation saying, all right, I've got this problem and that problem in my life. And I'd like to know from my guiding angels or, you know, um, how do I proceed forward and what could the problem be? Then I will have one of those uh, clairvoyancy um, experiences where I'm just, I'm just getting thoughts and now as I permeate these thoughts or as I share these thoughts, then um, whoever my client would be, then it would make sense to them. But to me, it'd be like, oh, okay, where does that come from? <laughs> you know, but by now it's like, I'm used to it. All right. And I understand that. All right. This is how my gift actually operates. All right. And then, um, so, you know, yes, you may be talking alone, but it's not always the case that really you're trust. All right. And then blurry eyesight. Um, you know, somebody recently actually, um, said to me, you know, uh, now I get uh, blurry eyesight, you know, sometimes I, I just get blurry. And I thought about it and I was like, you know, I used to experience that a lot, but I haven't experienced it in such a long, long time, you know, and it got me thinking that, all right, what, what major, or what, what did I go through? And the only thing that I really could like 
uh, think about was, oh, okay, actually I haven't experienced blurry vision ever since Nguye Peshwini. So um, I went to a Peshwini and then, you know, I finished, I graduated, um, the whole ceremony. And come to think about it, I haven't experienced like um, bouts or random bouts of blurry eyesight. And I remember I was telling this, no, um, ever since Nguye Peshwini and then I came back, I, I haven't experienced blurry eyesight. So maybe there's something to that, something worth looking into. Right, but I know when my blurry eyesight started, I, I I think I can remember, um, and that's why maybe I didn't pay much attention to it, um, while I was still working for um, I no 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 I think yeah it was Ina Bridge, um, one time um, at the offices um, I was a programmer there, uh, back office programmer, and uh, you know there were painters and they were using this. Um, not methylated spirit, but something that we call thinners for, for cleaning off paint and so forth, or paint brushes, um, kind of like paraffin, right? And as I inhaled it, um, you know, because, I mean, it's fumes, it, it did affect my eyesight. Um, I ended up getting blurry vision and so forth. But that's around about the time when, you know, from then on, I, I, I you know, it was... Every now and then, I, I would be so sensitive to fumes that I would, you know, um, experience blurry eyesight. So sometimes, just check, you know, maybe you are allergic to certain fumes or certain uh, chemicals. And, um, you know, you just need to pay more attention. It's like, okay, fine. Um, what is being used around here and so forth? Because the first time around, I, I did not figure it out that, oh, my goodness, um, you know, my eyes are blurry or my eyesight is blurry as a result of these fumes. You know, I, I just thought, oh my gosh, like, where does this come from? But the next time around, I, I noted that when I was around uh, people or painters, um, I would then get that reaction, right? Um, obviously, then over time, you learn to avoid it, all right? So, on, so you see, hence I say I can't always jump to the conclusion that because you've got blurry eyesight means you've got a you've got a calling yoktrasa. Sometimes is you have just been exposed to fumes that you are possibly allergic to, and blurry eyesight could just be you reacting to such fumes. All right, and um, I just want to quickly go through this because we're about to run out of time, and I'm afraid that I might miss out on you know, um, the point of, uh, of me going through these, right? Um, something really interesting, um, fear of water and uh, sangomas. Look, a lot of people fear water for obvious reasons. A lot of times we don't know how to swim. But even if you know how to swim, the ocean looks scary. The water does look scary, you know. You don't know how deep it is. You don't know what could be in there, and so forth. So I think for a lot of people, especially, you know, if 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 you grew up around South Africa and um, like most black people, we don't have access to swimming pools and whatnot. So your relationship with water is, you know, with with um, lots and lots of water is that of fear, whereby you don't know how to swim and. You know, your primary instinct kicks in, um, which is survival, that if you were to fall in there and you don't know how to swim, you're going to drown. You know what I'm saying? So um, fear of water does not actually, like, for me, is not that strong, right? Unless if you get a certain sense as you walk in past water. Is it all types of water? Is it like, are you also fearful of bath water? You know, so fear of water, uh, yes or no, you know? And then um, in fear of Sangomas, I mean, when I was a kid, there was so much mystical things that surrounded the idea of Isangoma. You know, when I was a kid growing up, we feared Amasangoma. We were taught to fear Amasangoma, you know? So essentially, at the end of the day, it's like this is a landed fear a lot of times. But once you understand what they do and what they're all about, and they're just like, you know, any other people with a particular profession or a particular knowledge in certain things, you know, once you start understanding, because we fear what we don't know. But once you start learning and you start understanding, then you realize there's really nothing much to fear, all right? So for me, that doesn't tick the box very much. Um, gym of flying, 
Hey, man. Um, I think a lot of people um, who have gone by your trust and so forth um, can can attest to this, that, yeah, I used to have a lot of dreams um, of flying. But for me personally, you know, neither here nor there. Um, did I dream of flying? A lot of times. Did it stop because I went to a petrol engine? No. Um, there was a period in my life where I was always just like, almost every week I'm dreaming of flying. And it was the most awesome feeling that, uh, you know, I would experience. It was like kind of like a lucid dream. So it really felt real. All right. And then dreaming of spiritual cloths, beads and some warmers. Um, yeah, maybe um, something to, to look into. Uh, dream praying for people. Yeah, dream. you know, dreams also are a very powerful um, communication, uh, you know, that could be coming through. So I, I personally don't take dreams lightly. Um, however, I caution around the misinterpretation thereof. We can both dream the same thing and the meaning could be totally, totally different. It differs from person to person. So we can both dream of a particular event or of a funeral or of a wedding. And it might not necessarily mean that we are both, um, you know, going to attend a wedding. It can be exactly the same, but it, it, it differs. It could totally differ, you know. So there's a lot around dreamscapes that you know, one needs to understand. I think if you go and look at um, a podcast that I did with, um, you know, um, Kulunzala, if not Kulunzala, I think it was a Kulu, um, I forgot his name, but just go and have a look at uh, one of the podcasts that we did where I was interviewing um, some Kulu around the dreamscapes, right? And he actually, um, puts it so nicely and explains it so nicely in terms of what is happening within the dreamscape. All right. Um, dreaming of praying for people. I've covered that dreams, a thing before it happens. Now, now that is something to, to look into, um, you know, where you are literally seeing things before they happen. Right. Does it mean good to Melio Tuasa? Not always. All right. Um, but does it mean that there is, something that you need to maybe do or something that you need to 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 undertake to fully be able to understand whatever this thing is be it a talent be it a gift or something like that yeah you know i mean if i dream of things and they happen definitely definitely is some like something that i have to really go into and try and understand even deep and even further like you know um, dreaming of wild animals, not always the case, you know, um, a lot of times is you are probably watching a movie that has wild animals and so forth, you know, so I'm just saying, keep an open mind, all right, don't be too quick to jump to conclusions, um, dreaming of dams, lakes and rivers, interesting, yay and nay, you know, dreams are, like they come in all different types of forms. But like I'm saying, when it comes to dreams, right, besides the ones where you dream something and it actually happens, um, the other dreams or the rest of the dreams, for me personally, I, I, I stand by what I said, wherein I am saying that it differs. So it boils down to interpretation. Can you get the message? Because I do believe that dreams are messages. Something has been communicated with us, but um they the you know they can be so abstract that a lot of things don't make sense right and and that can happen so now oftentimes you find that you know there's interpretation that um must come through and if you interpret it wrong you just might end up doing the wrong thing or you might end up believing the wrong thing right so do take time
to 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 actually go back to that podcast where I was talking about the dreamscape and I was interviewing Mkulu around the dreamscape and he really really just explains it so nicely and will also be able to explain around the animals that you're dreaming about and so forth all right and then um dreaming of uh, any kind of water-based animals dreaming walking or living underwater dreaming of school dreaming a lot of times there is that um, notion that okay i dreamt of being back at school even though you know you finished high school such a long time ago and a lot of times um i've i've, I've, I've literally seen that all right people um say yeah I, I i dreamt of this and ever since i went to a pet training or i went to initiation school um i no longer dream of being back in high school right for, for a lot of people i mean for me personally yes i remember having those dreams where i was back at school right but did it mean that i have to go a pet training you see different interpretation for different people for somebody else is it could be that i have got some learning to do i need to focus my life um on learning um or does this learning mean that um not always the case right so there are different ways of learning but you know what i get from a dream like that is like spend your time um actively and consciously learning intentionally so right and then um dreaming of sea creatures i think it's the same as um dreaming of water-based animals right um having issues i mean who doesn't have issues you know um and, and i think that's point number 20 having issues literally we all have some kind of issues that we're dealing with and which is pretty normal it's i mean that's what life is about right or that's what life um, plays itself out to be issues that you're dealing with right um but i find that is such a broad statement it's like somebody saying no i can't deal with you you've got issues and it's like oh my goodness you're not helping me you know what kind of issues are we talking about here you know um I, I, a lot of people telling you that you you you, you have issues do you think you have issues you understand so sometimes maybe it just requires you to just really um dissect and deal with each and every single one of those issues possibly with a mentor or possibly with a friend or possibly with somebody you trust who's more knowledgeable is a lot more mature and has experienced a bit more of life than you have and possibly they could help you um go through that Right, and then um, I think she list, oh, having suicidal thoughts and attempts. Sometimes life can get so difficult that all you're thinking about is suicide. Like I said, um, life is difficult for a lot of people. And sometimes when you are unable to, you know, make sense of the things that, the challenges that you have to deal with in you know, maybe you are experiencing some trauma, loss of somebody, or things are just not working out in your life. Um, it can lead you to having societal thoughts, you know, um, where you feel like you are pressed up against the wall and there's no any other way and you wish that you were not alive um, because things are so difficult. Yeah, I can imagine somebody going through something like that would have societal thoughts. Did I have societal thoughts myself? Yes. You know, um, do I know people who did? Yes. Um, do I know somebody that, or some people that attempted? Yeah, I know some people that attempted. You know, and by God's grace, um, some of, they were not successful. Um, you know, and they managed to get the help that they needed. Sometimes you just need to see a specialist you know or uh, somebody that can help you work through those 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 challenges sometimes we amplify um the problems you find that the challenge or the problem in front of you is not as big as we make it out to be in our own minds so um our minds have a tendency of amplifying a matter a challenge or a situation to 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 seeming uh bigger than it actually is so yeah you know First, you know, I'd like to say, speak to someone if, if you're going through something like that. And then um, short breath, especially when you are angry. Um, oof. When we are angry, we experience some kind of emotion and that emotion can, um, you know, we can react, our bodies can react 
um, in ways that are unusual. So things like short breath. I mean, the only time I've experienced short breath, right? Um, and I, I would imagine sort of like panic attacks. I was like over 10 years ago, you know, or 15 years ago. And I guess it was like my, my first ever like breakup, like <laughs> heartbreak. So um, yeah, I would wake up in the middle of the night, like experiencing short breath, you know, and uh, struggling to breathe. But literally it was because I was going through a heartbreak, you know, and I had never experienced anything like that before. Um, so imagine I could have concluded, you know, somebody can conclude, but then again, like, does that deal with the heartbreak? You understand? So let us not confuse issues. You know, somebody says, oh, yeah, I'm depressed. Sometimes you're not depressed. It's just the situation. You're broke. You know, I mean, when I'm broke, I feel like I'm depressed. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we're just confusing brokenness with depression. I mean, who, who doesn't? You know, I, I get panic attacks. I get anxious when I don't have money, <laughs> you know. Um, then the people hate you for no reason. Yeah, it's very easy to, to come to that conclusion, right? It's like, are you really introspecting? Uh, everybody just hates you, Jay, for no reason. You know what I'm saying? So as that that is a possibility. But also, again, is like, have you done a proper assessment of yourself? You know, to, to you know, just, just help you, you know, see if, no, but now I mean, there are certain traits myself that I possibly have that drop people off the wrong way, you know? So that is something, you know, it's not always the case that people hate you, therefore, medio twasa, all right? Um, and then here's another one. You don't last in relationships. Um, not always the case. Um, you know, possibly you have some issues that you need to resolve within yourself. Maybe there's some traits, some habits that you have that, you know, you keep going into relationships with and they normally just end up, um, you know, breaking your relationship right? If you have a tendency of cheating in a relationship, your relationship will not last. <laughs> you know, if you have a, a, a tendency of being dishonest in your relationship, your relationship will not last. So sometimes these things require us to have an honest introspection, an honest assessment of ourselves, to say, look, what are the things that I am doing or what habits do I have that are messing up my relationships, be it friendships with people, be it relationship with people, be it, you know, with your spouse or with your, 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 your person or your people. But a lot of these things is before we jump to the conclusion, you've got a calling. It require us to just have a deep introspection about ourselves. And I, I know I titled today's show, um, Umsamu, you know, um, and very, very deliberately so, or very importantly so, is that what I have learned um, over time and what I've discovered is that all these symptoms all these things that I've highlighted, one all the way from one up to twenty-four, right? Um, sudden mood swings. You always want to be alone, feeling as if you are being followed by someone, but yet you are alone, sensing shadows every time you pray, being short-tempered and stubborn, impatient, being extremely lazy, like talking alone, blurry eyesight, fear of water and sangomas, dream of flying, dreaming of spiritual thoughts, beads and sangomas. Um, a dream uh, praying for people, dreams are uh, a thing before it happens, dreaming of wild animals, dreaming of dams, lakes, rivers, 
dreaming of any kind of water-based animals, dreaming walking or living underwater, dreaming of school, dreaming of sea creatures, having issues, having suicidal thoughts and times, um, short breath, especially when you're angry, people hate you for no reason, you don't last in relationships. So I've just listed like the one up to 24 points, right? Now, um, yes, it is possible that Melio Trasa, but it is not always the case. And what I've discovered now, the other side of it, and from a spiritual perspective, is these are also signs that umsamu wagini requires attention. And what do I mean when I'm talking about umsamu, all right, or umsamu, right? And lisika, akwahongina. Um, so basically this is you know people make the mistake of thinking or just you know isolating reducing umsamu to an altar or to a shrine where they where they they, they pray or where they or they communicate with their ancestors or they pray to god all right and um essentially no um it's not always that umsamu can be reduced to your shrine or to your altar, that little corner in your house where you communicate with your ancestors or where you pray to your God. No, in this constant uh, uh, context, um, really umsamu is literally something much more, what, um, deeper than that, for lack of a better word. It's something that, you know, for me in this regard has to do with um, your your family lineage, um, has to do with the structure of your family. And when I say um samuako or samuahao is not in order, it simply means, or oh, I'm referring to the affairs of your family and, you know, what is currently happening in your family and what has happened in the past and what could possibly happen in the future, that there have been some wrongs that were committed either by yourself, because obviously you're not perfect, but there, um, there are some wrongs or there are things that were supposed to happen that were not done by your, by your parents or were not done by your, your forefathers or your ancestors for that matter, right? Um, and ancestors, I mean like your great grandparents and so forth, right? Uh, meaning that those who came before you, right? So, um, and I'm referring to that, Gucci, when umsamu is not in order and uh, it's, 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 you know, it's not been attended to, um, it can really, really um, throw our lives into a tailspin, into, um, into a mess, right? So, essentially, these symptoms or this list of 24 things that I've highlighted, you know, uh, or that I picked up of, uh, from that lady of Facebook, um, could also be a calling that has more to do with umsamu wagini than it has to do with um, you having to go to Twasa to initiation school where you'll become a sangoma or where you'll become a, a traditional healer right um and literally it could have more to do with umsamu again and generally you find Gucci, your life literally you you are feeling stuck and now somebody else asked me because i mean i i posted this um on the socials and i was like look um if umsamu is not in order, um, Samuako or your um, Samu, um, or your family affairs for that matter, all right, and your affairs are not in order, are not correct, and there's a lot of wrong in thee, then you will most likely um, uh, not have anything go right in your life, or a lot of things will just be a mess and a confusion, right? And um, essentially, at the end of the day, even if ungahambu yo twasa uye pehlweni o go to consult inyanga and they say no uh, use this multi or you know 
you can go to you know let me thunders, let me pray if umsam umanga kahle the chances of you getting success from whatever intervention are like next to zero you'll go to a petrini and come back and feel like you've done nothing you've moved nothing all right so essentially it starts for me it starts with umsam right and ipesho can help with maybe helping you to start understanding umsamwa gini and start being able to fix umsamwa ko right however i find that that is such an expensive route <laughs> you know because ukuya a pension is not exactly cheap you know um the cheapest i've come across is like 8000 rand and that does not include every other expense that you have to incur right and it can run into like hundreds of thousands all right now given the economic conditions that we find ourselves in as a result of covid is that also even you know an option to a lot of people not necessarily and i find that a lot of people are spending so much money on things on solving certain um spiritual or cultural things that could have been solved with like a fraction of the money that they have spent right and all it takes is just trying to understand um samwa gini um samwa so i guess now that takes me into now the the, the subject matter that you know forms part of the show all right or part, part of today's episode and i'm really going to honestly break it down even further but for today that's where i'd like to hold it all right or i'd like to cut it for today um but if anything is that all these symptoms yes you do have a calling but you, your calling does not necessarily always mean that melu ye pehlweni melu yo twasa sometimes those symptoms that you are getting that equate to a calling could be a calling to fix umsamu wagini or to fix msamu how meaning the affairs of your lineage meaning your own personal affairs um your your parents affairs your ancestral affairs there are some rites of passages that were not undertaken and so forth and somebody asked me oguti how do i identify if someone is not in order and that is something i'm going to get into in the next episode but for today thank you for tuning in and this is neo others call me mkhulung kanyamba all right and you were tuned into the calling with neo on yo media and uh, this is a show remember all about spirituality and cultural matters right and i'm hoping to like diversify and like bring people from different backgrounds belief systems and so forth all right so for the spiritually and culturally curious the calling with neo is what you should be on adios amigos and thank you very much for tuning in